Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome, welcome. You know what I didn't do? I did not put in the light that I need. Okay, I'm gonna have to walk away for one second because I gotta get a different light to put up so that you can hear me. But let us know where you're coming in from. Hello to you and all of you. How are you? How are you? I just forgot to put in, to bring in the light, the much needed light, so that you are able to see, see me and I can see you. There we go. There we go. Let there be. And there is. That makes such a big difference. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. Let us know where you are watching from um, and let us know um, who you are. Just say hello. Uh, oh, I won't have any banners tonight. It's a lot there. But we are going to be making some dressing or stuffing or dressing. Do you call it dressing or stuffing? Put that in the chat. What do you call it? Dressing or stuffing? And do you put it inside your turkey or outside your turkey? I don't know how you guys eat it. We eat it. Um, we call it dressing and we eat it outside of our turkey. And I had it turned this way so that you guys could kind of see the counter a little bit. I already started on it, but then you can't see my head. So I'm going to have to do some maneuvering here a little bit. <laughs> Sorry about that. Maybe I'll raise it up so you can see it. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Thanks for being here. I know that you guys are all getting ready for Thanksgiving, but we are going to um, just have a little fun cooking for you tonight. I actually, of course, made some of this before we got on and I was hoping it would be done before we actually got started. However, it is not done. So I can smell it in the, uh, in the oven though. It smells so good. But so I'm just washing out this bowl so we can put all of the ingredients that we need inside the bowl and cook it. And um, for those of you who are getting ready for Thanksgiving and to have family over and all that good stuff, maybe you guys can come together and do this together. That'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Okay, let me grab the celery and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, but what's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Do you like the mashed potatoes? Do you like, I don't know, what else do you guys have? Do you have turkey and dressing? Do you like, let me see, make sure that this is coming up. Welcome, welcome, like and share, like and share. I'm just gonna do this real quick, just to make sure we are live and folks can see us and I'm not just talking to myself. Hi, how are you? Like and share, like and share, please. Would certainly appreciate that. Thank you for being a part of our community tonight. Yes, we are up, homemade dressing. All right, here we go. Let's get the party started. Okay, we want to make homemade dressing and they're really, um, like I said, I made some before we came on tonight. Really dressing is about seasoning and bread. That's pretty much it. So um, we are going to take celery and depending on how much you make, you wanna cut off a couple of stalks of celery, like maybe two or three, maybe even four, depending if you have to make like a really big pan or something. So you wanna take your celery and make sure you wash it off. Wash off that celery. And where's my knife? I don't even know what I did with it. I do have a knife though, I promise you I have a knife. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, come on in. We're making dressing for Thanksgiving. And wanted to know what you guys usually make for Thanksgiving. All right, got your celery. What you want to do is take your celery stock beginning on, hello, Stacy. hello, Ernest, how are you? Do you guys know how to make cel uh, celery, how to make stuffing or dressing? Or what do you call it? Let's start there. Dressing or stuffing? Which one do you call it? Dressing or stuffing? I'm taking my celery and I am cutting it. And, I, um, and you have to cut it. I'm cutting it like, man, I wish you guys could see. Mm, the counter. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Maybe you can see if I back up a little bit. How about that? 
Hey, dressing. That's what I, that's what we call it. Dressing. Do you guys call it dressing or stuffing? Well, you have to cut your celery up and when you cut it up, you have to cut it up really fine because it's going to be in your dressing or stuffing. Now, do you guys eat your the stove, stove top in a box? I hear you. A lot of people do that <laughs> big time. Now, do you guys put your dressing or your stuffing inside your turkey or do you keep it separate? That's a whole nother conversation that folks have. Which one do you have? Uh, I'm cutting up the celery. I won't cut it all up. But when you cut it up, you also have to cut it and make sure it is fine. I mean, just the small chunk. So you, I cut it one way and then I go back through and cut it again just to make sure it is like really, really, really fine like that. And again, like I said at the top, dressing is nothing but bread and seasoning, really, honestly. All right, we cut up all these celery and you want to put that in a separate bowl or move it out of the way, rather. Put it in a bowl, cut up your celery, cut up the celery, and then you want to cut up your onion. Now, I like, I usually like red onions, but I don't know how I would like red onions inside of dressing. So I got a yellow onion and it's got... An, you have to slice that the same way that you slice the celery. You want to make sure you slice that. And you want to cut up your onion so that that is very fine. And I know that there are some people who don't particularly care for onions, but you want to make sure that the onion is just really uh, small because you don't want to bite into the turkey and then you've got like a chunk, a chunk of onions. So uh, when you use your, when you put your, um, dressing on the stove top do you doctor it up or do you just dump it out of the box and then just put it in there now while i'm cutting these onions i know many of you have cut onions before when you cut onions does it make you cry does it make you tear up it does me sometimes although these aren't right now for some reason but a friend of mine said that you're supposed to put a piece of bread in your mouth so that the onions won't make you cry have y'all ever heard that before Put a piece of bread in your mouth so the onions won't make you cry. In all my days, I've never heard that before. Have any of you heard it? I'm rinsing my knife off. All right, so we've got our onions done. We've got our celery cut up. Um, I don't know if it's an old wives tale or what, but tell me how you keep the onions from burning your eyes. Okay, now let me think. I got the recipe before we got on, so I'm trying to, rem and I did it, I cooked it before we got on, but I'm trying to remember everything from memory. <laughs> um, now we're going to use poultry seasoning. Poultry seasoning comes in a little bottle like that, and you would use um, basically one tablespoon of poultry seasoning. And I should have taken the lid off of that, but one tablespoon poultry seasoning, you put that in there. Also, sage. I have rubbed sage. And I was told um, that some people like the uh, fresh sage. So if you live like near a farmer's market or you know where you can go and get sage, you can go and get the fresh sage or the sage leaves. And actually, you can get them from any grocery store because I remember seeing them there. But you have to make sure you chop them up and chop them up really fine. And remember that the taste from the actual leaf is very is stronger than what you get in the bottle so anyway you put a tablespoon of sage in your dressing there and before <laughs> um again i'm trying to do this from memory um you also want to make sure now 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 here's a debate i made some cornbread because of course i made this whole dish before we actually got on um a lot of people like to make homemade cornbread. And if that is the case, when you make homemade cornbread, you have to use cornmeal. But it was suggested to me to use Martha White. I'm not endorsing anybody or anything. Martha White self-rising cornmeal in order to make your cornbread from scratch. Well, we are modern day folks and we are using Jiffy. <laughs> okay, so that's what I made here. I got the Jiffy cornbread. I cooked that before and I'm not going to use it all for this, but you take your cornbread and you crumble that up. Let me move this back so you can see. You crumble your cornbread, crumble your cornbread into your celery, into your onions, into your sage, 
and into your poultry seasoning. You crumble it all up into there. Okay, that's that. Just wanted to rinse my hands on that. All right, I'm going to have to look at my um, directions that I got before we got on because I don't remember. I think I have everything in there, but I just want to make sure. Um, anybody put any fancy anything fancy in your um, in your dressing? Anybody put anything fancy? Do you put like um, I don't know, not raisins? I don't know anything. If you put anything fancy in your dressing or your stuffing, go ahead and put it in the chat so we can chat with you. Now you want to use some pepper. Just put a little bit of pepper. Put it to to taste. Um, and I think on here she told me to use one tablespoon of pepper. So use one tablespoon of pepper, put that in there. And also salt. So I'm going to be really careful with the salt because most of the ingredients that you put in kind of have a salty flavor. And for those of you or for those of us who need to watch our salt intake, you may not want to put salt in at all. You may want to allow people to salt their dish when they're at the table once it's already been cooked. But you can do the thing of salt if you want. I put one squeeze in that. Okay, then after the salt, I think I got all of that. Uh, now my phone wants to lock up. And you know that I'll just start making stuff up, right? All right, black pepper, very little salt. Okay, okay. Now we've crumbled the cornbread in here. We've got the celery, we've got the onions, we've got the sage, we've got the poultry seasoning, we've got the salt and the pepper, very little salt and pepper. All right, then you want to use your chicken stock. You want to use your chicken stock. Now, one thing that cooks do is that they're like, I've got chicken cooking in the oven right now, and you may want to put your turkey in an hour or so before you make your, well, you can make up the stuffing. Anyway, put your turkey in first. So then all of the juices from the turkey, you can use that in your stock as opposed to using um, chicken stock from somewhere, but I have my chicken in there. It's not done. So instead of using the juices or the drippings from the church, the chicken, I have chicken broth. And so that is what I will use in this. So chicken broth, you use that in there and you stir that up. And then some people will take um, bread and put it in the oven and toast it so that you have that extra breadiness, if you like that. Um, but here's here's an idea that I was told to use. It's Petri, Pepper Farm Herb Seasoning. And again, at the beginning, I told you that all stuffing is, is bread and seasonings. So if you get this, um, this has bread in it, but it also has the seasoning in it. And you have to get the one, the blue bag with the blue trim. Now these bags go fast. I went into the store earlier tonight and there was like this whole display of all of this. But when you go looking the day before Thanksgiving for a bag like this, you probably will not find it. So I encourage you to go tomorrow or either this weekend to get what you want and go early. But you use, I didn't even use this whole bag. I got two of them actually. I didn't use the whole bag. I just used a little bit of it and poured it in here. And that gave you, that gives you the herb, the seasonings. And it also gives you a little more of the bread because it has white bread, it has wheat bread in it, and it has herbs and spices. And this just kind of gives you a little more of a hearty taste. Now, this is what it looked like. It really looks the same. I made it earlier. This is what it looks like how I made it earlier. I've got the real deal in the oven right now. And it's still cooking. Now, what you want to do, too, is you don't want your dressing to be dry. So when you stir it up, I'm just going to mix all of this up together, the old and the new, from what I made earlier today to now. You want to mix all of this together and I want you to, I don't know what that is. I do know what it is, but <laughs> what I want you to do is take a look at the consistency of this. It's almost like um, it's wet. You can tell that it's wet, but it's kind of dry. Now, when you put it in the oven, if you put it in the oven like this, it's going to dry it out and it's going to um, be like, a, it's just going to dry it out and not have a good consistency to it. It's going to have like a, a milky, uh-oh, it's going to have a, dang, um, 
not a milky, it's going to have a like a creamy kind of undone consistency. So you want to make sure that you use, you can use your chicken broth. This one is reduced sodium chicken broth. You can put a little water. You can use the drippings from your turkey or like me, I made um, some baked chicken. You can use the drippings from your baked chicken and pour that in there. Let me move this so y'all can see. And I have made a mess over here on the floor. Okay, I put some more in here. It's not a whole, whole lot, but look at the consistency now. It's almost like a little watery, like you shouldn't be eating this um, raw and you shouldn't be. This is what needs to go into the oven, but it's still not. Um, and you can put it in the oven like this and it won't dry it out, but you have to watch it a little bit. But I'm going to put a little more in it to make it a little more a little runnier so that when it's in the oven, it doesn't dry out and it will actually cook all the way through. I'm just gonna put a little bit more, just a little bit and stir it up. There we go. Now that has a good free flow consistency to it. Got to step over my mess that I made. Now this has a almost like a, like you put milk in cereal and you left it too long. It almost has that kind of consistency. Well, that's what you want to put into the oven because it has to have a little bit of a, a juice to it so that it can cook really well. And this smells so good. I'm going to cook this too, but I already have some in the oven, like I said. And I was hoping that it would be done, but I'll show it to you. It's not all the, it's not done at all, but I will show you what is happening with it so far. I use my big gloves. Thanks, guys, for chiming in. And while you are watching, listening, and while we're talking to each other, why don't you put into the chat, what is your favorite Thanksgiving dish? I would like to see that. What is your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Oh. Now, this is what mine looks like so far. It started out kind of runny a little bit, but it's cooking. And you can see around the edges how it's kind of getting brown a little bit. So, and if this cooks and it stays the same color, and if you want to get like a brown consistency on the top, turn on the broiler and put this in, but you have got to stand in front of it because if you let it broil too long, it will totally burn it. But we're going to let this cook a little longer. And what you can do periodically is stick your fork in it. I don't have a fork around, so I'll use a knife stick your fork in it, like in the center of it, like you would a cake to see if it's done, to see if it's, see how, like I stuck this in there and you can still see some of it coming out. It obviously is not done, but I mean, that's what you want to look for. Look to make sure that it is done in the center and you don't have any, um, it's not runny. And you'll see that if you stick a fork in it or a knife in the center of it. So let me put this back in so it can continue cooking and continue my conversation with y'all. And my chicken is down there baking also. I have made such a huge mess on the floor. <sighs> but that's okay. So, okay, I need y'all to talk to me. What is happening? What is your favorite dish for Thanksgiving? Your favorite dish. And really, that's it. That's how you make dressing. And whether or not you want it to go inside your bird, you can do that like this. You can do that. Um, if you want to keep it separate, that's the way I've grown up. We've always kept it separate. Every, you know, the uh, dressing and the bird cook separately. And so that's how I like it because then you can kind of dress it up the way you want. And that is that. Oh, I found something that I wanted to share with you guys. When you, uh, you didn't finish your statement, Edward, what is your favorite dish for Thanksgiving? Let me show you what I found for you guys. I wanted to show you. Two things. Okay. Well, I got this one a little what a um, couple days ago. Mac and cheese. I know that's right. Mac and cheese. Ooh. And you have to put the blended cheese in it with the different types of cheese. Now, do you put in eggs in your mac and cheese? Well, I guess you gotta have to, but I like to put in sour cream 
in my mac and cheese and a little bit of milk. Um, a friend of mine says that they put in like the creamer, the creamer. I've never done the creamer, but I have done milk um, in, uh, in my mac and cheese. And I love it like that. Got to stir it up real good. Sour cream, like three different cheeses. You can buy the little shredded cheese in a, in a bag and get all that in one. And yummy, yummy, yummy. For those of you who are just joining us, be sure to like and share, like and share and subscribe, depending on what platform you're watching on. And let's see, my favorite dish is turkey dressing and mac and cheese. I know that's right. Delicious. It has come to my attention that some folks don't know how to make greens, don't know how to cook greens. And I didn't think about it, but I didn't buy any. But I'll give you this quick tutorial. When you buy greens, they come there. It's like a leaf, like something like that. So you have to pull the leaf part off of the stem. It's a stem that goes up the center of the greens. You pull the leafy part off and you need to wash it. You need to rinse it, put it in the sink, put water in the make wait, clean out the sink with soap and water. And even if you want to use some um, Clorox or whatever, clean out the sink really good and then rinse it out. Make sure you're not putting all that on your food. And then you put water in the sink. You put the greens, the green, the leaves from the greens in the sink and you kind of swoosh them back and forth. You swoosh them, you let the water out the sink and then you fill it up again with the, put it in there, swishy, swishy. And then you take some of the greens out, just a handful, you roll them up and then you begin to chop them and put them back in that water. So they're getting clean and they're getting chopped all in that same water. You let that water out, you put more water in again and you rinse them off because greens come from the ground. They've got dirt in them. They've got residue in them and they probably have like I, they probably have like little um, bugs or whatever in them. So you have to wash your greens. You're right. That is old school, but I want my stuff to be clean and delicious big time. So you make sure um, you clean your greens. And then while you're doing that, you put water on the, on the stove in a pot. And if you're going to put, um, if you're going to put, I don't know, a lot of people are trying to eat healthier. So maybe like a smoked turkey or something like that, then um, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Wash those greens multiple times just to be safe. Indeed, <laughs> it is old school, but it works to make sure. Have you ever eaten greens and you were like, you tasted like a granule, some granules or something and you're like, oh, they didn't wash the greens really well. They didn't wash the greens. You never want that, especially after you've got your plate piled up. You don't want granules in your plate um, because somebody didn't wash the greens really well. So anyway, while you're doing, while you're washing the greens, you want to put your water on the pot. You want to put your smoked turkey in or whatever you're going to use to flavor your greens. And then after you wash them three times, <laughs> then you put your greens in the water on the stove and you season them to taste some salt and pepper is usually about all that I use and seasoning salt. What about kittens? I'm cooking them next week. What are you talking? Oh, you need to stop. Anyway, um, this is what I have done so far. For those of you who are just getting on, we are making homemade dressing. And this is what the consistency looks like so far. And again, you can make it um, a little more what juicier <laughs> if you want. But this is kind of the consistency that I have it as. Um, and what we started now. I was told to make homemade cornbread. I did not do that. Um, and if you are going to make homemade cornbread, you need the suggestion was made that you get the self-rising cornmeal mix. I'm just recapping um, what was happening. So pretend I made homemade cornbread, which I didn't because we're a modern day girl. So we use the jiffy. So we've got the cornbread and we crumbled it up into our bowl, our skillet, our pan, our pot, our pan crumble the cornbread into that. And then let's see, we cut up the celery. You have to cut it up really, really fine. We cut up the onion. And like I said, ooh, like I said before, you know that I like red onions, but this time I used a white onion and I cut it up really, really fine. Let's see, I'm going to try to make my own now. Oh, good, I hope that you will. And I'll put the recipe um, in the chat so that you guys can find it. Then you put in poultry seasoning. You wanna use one tablespoon of poultry seasoning. Then you want to use sage. 
and you use one tablespoon of sage. Now, if you get the real sage leaves, you want to make sure that you chop it so that it is really fine and know that the taste or the flavor from the sage leaves is very potent. So you want to make sure that you probably don't want to use a whole bunch of the sage leaves. And then after that, what did I use? Oh, chicken broth. Now you can buy chicken broth and use it so that you can make this liquidy. You want to make sure that it's there's some kind of like liquidy consistency to it because if you put this in the oven and you don't have a lot of liquid in it, don't make it runny like it's a cup of water, but you want enough liquid, you want it liquidized so that when it bakes, it can bake some of that liquid out. And I did show you guys, you'll have to watch the replay. See, I've got some in the oven right now and I was hoping that it would be done by the time we came on, but it isn't. So anywho, um, I just kept a little bit out so that I could show you how to throw all that together. Um, this is the other thing that I wanted to show y'all. I found this and I've, I've recently um, gotten back into eating bagels and I bought some everything bagels and they are yummy, yummy, yummy. They got like poppy seeds and stuff seasoning on the top. I'll show you what it looks like on the top. Saute onions and celery before adding to the bread mixture, the cornbread mixture. Okay, thank you. Which is probably what I was supposed to do and I didn't do it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, follow those directions right there because obviously they know more about this than I do. Obviously, um, supposed to saute them, and I didn't do that. So I hope this taste turns out okay. Listen to her. You can saute the. Oh, and look, another person came in and said the same thing. Uh, let me pull it up. You can saute, she said the same thing. Now these are seasoned cooks, so you need to follow their directions. Saute the stuff. Butter to reduce the overall cook time. Butter in the butter in the dressing. Are you saying put butter in the actual mix the dressing mixture and that will reduce the cook time? I know you're probably typing really fast. <laughs> so let me know that. I appreciate that. And let's see. Hello, hello. How are you? Thanks for chiming in. We ask that you like and share. Please like and share uh, on your platform so that your viewers can join us. Okay. While we're waiting for that and that question to be answered, butter to reduce overall cook time. So I'm thinking you put the but. Well, tell us what that statement means so I can share it with our viewers. All right. Everything bagels, they kind of have like the poppy seeds and stuff on top. And I'm used to eating it with cream cheese. Well, I found some, it's cream cheese, but it's whipped. Have y'all ever had whipped cream cheese? It is really different. Doesn't really taste any different, but I like the consistency of it. It's kind of good. Katie Bell, have you fallen off? I want to answer to the butter to reduce the cook time. All right. The whipped cream. That's a dirty knife. Not dirty, but I use it on something else. It's clean now. Whip. Whip. Oh, 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 okay. So it was part of your first sentence. Okay, I got you. So Katie Bell was telling us, just like um, Miss Brooks or Lori Brooks was telling us, you can saute your diced celery and onions and saute your saute your onions and all that before you put it into your cornbread mixture. That's an important step. Remember that because I did not do that. So the second part of Katie Bell's thing was after you saute your onions and celery, use butter to reduce the overall cook time. So you can saute your onions and your celery in butter. So that totally makes sense. Thank you so much, everybody. All right. Everybody got that? You want to saute your stuff. Well, I got some dressing in the oven that doesn't have saute anything. And let's just hope that it turns out OK. I actually, before y'all got on, dropped a bunch of dressing down here. So I have to try to avoid it so I'm not stepping in it. The other thing that I found at the store tonight when I went out to shop for stuff was cinnamon honey seasoned butter. Cinnamon honey seasoned butter. I cannot wait to try this. And I, I'm going to try, I'm not going to open it, but I'm going to try it on my bagels. And I think it will taste delicious, but it's cinnamon honey seasoned butter. How about that? Yummy, yummy, yummy. 
All right. The other thing that I was going to make, and it has turned into a disaster, but I'm going to show you. Let's see. You can use olive oil on whatever you choose. That is a good point. Olive oil is a good um, substitute for whatever you want to use it on. A friend of mine gave me a recipe and the cake, the pie is so good, but I don't know what I did wrong to be honest with you. So when I get off of this with y'all, I'm going to call and say, help me. I messed it up, but I'm going to tell y'all what I did. Let me see. It is called a buttermilk pie. So some of y'all probably know how to make that, especially you experienced cooks who are on here <laughs> big time, <laughs> big, big time buttermilk pie. Okay. This is what my pie looks like, and it does not look good, and it does not look appetizing. But it might be good, though. I can't say that. Because looks can be deceiving. We know that in life. Everything that glitters is not gold. And don't judge a book by its cover. All of that stuff. But that pie does not look good. But let me get a knife. Oh, here's the other thing, too. Remind me to tell y'all about green beans. I'll come back to that. I made some green beans, too. All right. I'm going to cut this pie. This is a butter, buttermilk pie. So of course, you know, it has buttermilk in it and it has, oh, it looks decent. Okay, now I need to get a plate. Here's one, a plate, buttermilk pie. It's got buttermilk, it's got cheese, delicious and have made it. I thought this was one of your recipes you've made before, the buttermilk pie. It's got um, vanilla in it. It's got eggs and buttermilk and flour. I'm going to put a link on here because I videotaped while I was making it. So I'll let you guys see that. But the way it turned out, mm -hmm. Ooh, it actually tastes good. I don't know what happened. This looks like trash. I'm just going to be honest. It looks horrible, but it tastes really good. And I used a graham cracker crust, which is good. Uh -oh. Sorry. It's actually really good. Hmm. I told y'all looks can be deceiving. Wow. That is good. Mmm. 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 I don't need one inch of this at all. Oh, and a whole stick of butter. I remember that goes into it. But I'll leave a link to the recipe and I'll leave a link so that you can see the video of me making this. And yeah, that's good. Something else I was going to say, but now just, oh, green beans. Green beans. Okay. Green beans are a staple, staple dish. I made some green beans also. But this is one thing that I wanted to tell y'all. When I make green beans, do y'all put potatoes in your green beans? That's a good way to make it hearty. You could do that to um, enhance your green bean dish on Thanksgiving. You got your green beans and then put in your potato. And you could put in an onion or two. Um, I use uh, onion powder. I think it's onion powder. It's not onion powder. I think it's garlic salt. It's garlic salt. I use garlic salt. That's what it is. And y'all know that bouillons are my friend. If you want to season something and you don't want to put in a lot of salt and other seasonings and don't know really what to use, I'm telling you, bouillon cubes are the way to go. And they also have the kind of bouillon that you can kind of scoop out of your of the jar and put it in there. Um, and I've never tried that, but it might be a way to get some flavor into your food. Sweet potato pies always. <laughs> sweet potato pies. And I thought about grabbing some sweet potatoes and I did not. But I'm telling y'all, this cake, is, I mean, this pie is still in my mouth. It looks like, seriously, like I said, it looks like trash. It looks like I pulled it out of the garbage can. 
but it is so good. It's got so much good flavor. What I think happened was I don't think that I stirred it thoroughly. I don't think I stirred it enough. Man, it is good. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. What else was I going to tell y'all? If you are eating this holiday season and you're watching your weight or you want to watch what you eat, there is a way that you can eat everything that is laid out. You're saying it doesn't look bad. It looks like trash, my friend. This looks horrible. Look at the edges. It just looks horrible. But let me tell you something. This pie, this is buttermilk pie. It tastes so good with the graham cracker tusk. Graham cracker crust. It smells good in there. How do you know how it smells? <laughs> and maybe it smells good at your house. Okay. This is so good. It is so good. Um, but there is a way that you can eat everything that is on the menu. Even if you're watching um, what you eat, you have to watch your portions, watch your intake and all that. You know how? All you have to do is limit everything to the size of a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. If you want to, if you want to eat something, and you know you don't need it, but you want to try it on Thanksgiving, just take a tablespoon of the potato salad, a tablespoon of the sweet potatoes, a tablespoon of what else is there that you probably shouldn't be having? I don't know, candy yams. But take a tablespoon of it so that you are able to. Um, taste everything, but you're not eating so much that it would disturb your diet. But then you have to go and work out really hard, like the next couple of days. Now, for those of you who are just getting on, we um, did we stirred up our dressing. This is kind of the consistency that we have it as we put it in the oven. And if you want it a little more watery, you're welcome to do that. And let me just pull what we have in the oven out so we can see what is happening. And I also spilled a whole bunch of it right there, which is why I'm walking like I'm on an obstacle course because I'm trying not to get it into the floor. Oh, it's turning brown, y'all. It's turning brown. All right. I got some chicken in there too. Cooking. Look at it. Look at it. And to be honest, I have never made dressing before. So this is a my first experience with you. <laughs> It's still moving a little bit, so it means it still needs to cook a little more. But remember I said you want to make sure that it's like juicy a little bit so that it has time to cook and all of the flavors like meld together and all that. Thanks for the thumbs up and the hearts. Would love if you guys would like and share, like and share. Appreciate that. And the way that you can tell if your dressing is done is that you take your fork or a knife and you stick it in there. And if gunk comes out, I'm saying gunk, but if the residue from what you're cooking comes out, it means that it's still wet in the center and it is not done. So then you put it back in the oven and give it some more time to cook. But this looks so good. I am so excited. If, ooh, I'm excited. I, think. I put this in at seven o'clock. So I was hoping that it would be done. Obviously it is not. Um, so it will probably be done. It is 840 Eastern Standard Time. I don't know, maybe another 30 minutes. I don't I'll keep my eye on it. But that's just to give you a gauge. So when you guys go to cook on Thanksgiving, you've got to start cooking your meals early. And if you want to try something, then I encourage you to try it before the holiday. Like this pie, if I hadn't tried it, I probably would have like thrown it away. But I'll try it again. I'm not really sure why all of this like bubbled over or whatever. I think I needed to stir it more. I think I'm, I'm going to try it again, but like stir it more. But I can taste the butter, the butter. Um, it does have, does it have sugar in it? I can't remember now. I like my dressing a little wet. Okay. A little. Okay. It's got sugar. It's got buttermilk. It's got flour and vanilla, a stick of butter and then two eggs. And you know what? I may have cooked it too long because I turned the oven up to 450 because I was cooking something else. So the directions tell me to bake it at 350 for an hour. But anyway, I will put a link here and I'll let you guys see how I put it all together. I'll put it in the chat. It should have sugar in it. 
I thought I put I put sugar in it because I had to go and buy some. I didn't have sugar. Oh no. Yes, one cup of sugar. That's on the directions. I did put that in there. Thank you. I'm telling y'all, help a sister out. So I'm not giving out erroneous information. I'm actually going to put the rest of this dressing in something and finish cooking it. I left it out so that I could hang with you guys. Oh, and I told y'all to cut up the celery and the onions for your dressing. And our um, people who really know how to cook, they were like, you need to saute the celery and the onions before you mix them into the bread dressing mix. So do that. Make sure you saute them. You can use olive oil or butter. It enhances the cooking time, makes it go faster. Also, if you are making dressing and some people will make the bread from scratch, I'm just kind of recapping. Make sure you get the self-rising cornmeal mix. Make sure you get that. I bought this, but I did not make my cornbread from scratch. I'm a modern girl. So my cornbread came from the Jiffy Box. You know, y'all are with me. But it turns out well, it does well. It crumbles like it's supposed to. Do that. Uh, you want to do sage and you want to do poultry seasoning. And you also want to use chicken stock. Now you can use the juice from your chicken. I'm saying the juice from if you're cooking a turkey or cooking something like that. You want to use the juice out of that and put that in your um, dressing <clears throat> mix. And that really gives it a good flavor. So you don't have to season it so much. You can put uh, pepper in it. Put a tablespoon of pepper and a little bit of salt, but be careful with the salt. You may not want to put any salt on it at all and just let people salt it at the table. But here's the other thing. Remember, dressing is only bread and seasoning. So this is the magic wand, the herb seasonings. You have to get the one with the blue banner. When I walked into the store, there was like a huge display of stuff, we ask that you guys like and share, like and share, like and share on your platform so other folks can come in and join us. Um, but these go really fast. So if you go the day before Thanksgiving looking for this, you're gonna be sorry. So make sure you get this. And I didn't use the whole bag. I got more than one bag. I used kind of half of it. Hey, Jarrell, hey, how are you? Where are you now? So good to make your acquaintance again. I hope that you are doing well. Good to see you, Jarrell. Um, you may want to use like, well, let me say this. Depends on how many people you're cooking for. That's when you decide how much you use. But I only use maybe half of the bag. And I use a whole lot of chicken broth. If you don't want to use broth, this one is reduced sodium. You can put water in it. And I told y'all my all-time favorite, chicken bouillons. That will, help you, that will help you season anything. Whatever you cook, make sure you season it. And at this point, I should be asking, does anybody have any questions? But I don't have answers for you. So if you have questions, please go and talk to somebody that knows how to cook. I'm just sharing with y'all what I found out. Oh, you're in Charlotte. OK, good deal. Well, so happy for you. I know that you are do well. Jiffy might give the dressing a little sweet taste. Let me pull this up. Um, Jiffy might give the dressing a sweet. And I thought about that, Brenda. I really did, which... I would not like mom made ours from scratch. And that's why people make their bread from scratch or their, and some people use bread and they'll toast it and then crumble it up. Um, I'm just showing you different ways of what you can use. And again, I've never made dressing before. I've only watched people make dressing. Um, I've asked uh, for directions uh, for the recipe and they've told me, but I've never done it before. I only watch and I eat. I watch and I eat the dressing, watch and eat. So um, if you want to make homemade dressing, be sure to get the self-rising cornmeal mix. And I was told to use Martha White because I guess that's the best. I don't know. I'm not endorsing anything. I'm just saying what I was told. Um, thanks. for. <laughs> I appreciate it. Are you making plates? What <laughs> are you making plates? What parking lot are you selling? <laughs> you are crazy. I'm not making plates. <laughs> uh, so funny. All right. Thank you for the. I appreciate that. Thank you for encouraging me so much. And then, oh, thank you so much. Love you too. So <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Thank you for the support. All right. So I, that is really all I have. We did the, we did the um, green beans and that was it. I am going to put this in something. I need to find something to put it in though and cook it. I don't know what to use. 
I'm finding something to cook it in. I'm gonna pull this out one more time before we go, just so we can see what this dressing looks like. I just pulled it out like five minutes ago. But it is looking good. I'm so happy. Some of it is on the floor, but look at that, y'all. It's still a little wobbly, so I can tell that it still needs to cook. But I love the way it looks and it smells. Mm, I wish I had smell o vision. Mm, 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 mm. It smells so good. All righty. Well, that's all I got. I do have this chicken in here. Oh. If that had gotten done soon enough, I would have used the dripplings from the chicken. I'm going to let this cook without the lid. Okay, folks. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. It smells good, too. Thanks, guys, for joining us tonight. We certainly appreciate it. And I will put a link so that you can watch um, and get all the ingredients for this pie, this buttermilk pie that looks horrible but tastes so good. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Have a good evening, everybody. Have a good week. And if you plan on using some of this, to make your stuffing, you better go get it now because it goes fast and it will be gone and you will be sorry, Charlie. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for your input. Thank you real cookers for being on here and keeping us from going astray. We appreciate the thumbs up and the hearts. Be sure to like and share. You guys have a happy holiday. Have a great Thanksgiving. See you later. Bye.